Retention is the key to having long-term success in group coaching. In this video, I'm gonna share with you certain strategies that I've learned, many of them the hard way, to create better retention in your group coaching programs. Group coaching programs are amazing. For me, they've been a game changer in my life, in my business, and my personal leadership in all the ways. It can provide more money because you have more leverage, more ability to scale, more freedom as a result of that. And group coaching comes with its own set of challenges that I, for one, wasn't fully prepared for when I first started my group coaching program. One of the biggest things that I found the hard way was that when you're in a group coaching program, when you're leading one, there are group dynamics that come into play. Typical group dynamics like people getting into conflict, people not liking each other, people even sometimes bullying each other or creating cliques. It can all feel a little bit like high school sometimes. And the problem with that is that when people have experiences in adulthood that trigger them like they had in their childhood, they can sometimes start acting like children again. See, group coaching programs, just the very nature of being in a group triggers any sorts of issues people might have with belonging or worthiness, or if they have mother issues and you're a female, a woman coach leading people, they might start to have project some of those mommy issues onto you or father issues or whatever it is. I've personally experienced a lot of these different dynamics. And my first inclination several years ago was to think, I need to get out of here. I want to quit. Let me burn it down and go back to one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is so much easier. But there were problems with one-on-one -on -one coaching. I was getting bored and I wasn't making enough money. And there were all sorts of other issues that I'd be going back to. So I decided to stick it out and really figure out how do I become the kind of leader that can handle these types of dynamics, that can lead people through them, and that can create a culture of adults dealing with their own triggers and ultimately help people coach them through these situations so that they can use them to become more empowered in their lives also. It's been a win-win. Over the last few years, I've learned a lot. Nine years into running my group coaching program, and just to give you a sense of how it started and how it's going, the first three years, I only retained one client. And she's still with me to, to this day, by the way. Her name's Leanne Webster. You can check her out. She's really cool. But for three years, she was the only person that stuck around. So that means that for three years, I didn't really retain any clients because I didn't know how to lead and how to manage all these dynamics. Now, here we are nine years later, nine years from when I started it, and to this day, most of my clients, the vast majority, somewhere around like about 80% of clients, actually renew when they complete that first year. And not only do they renew for a second year, they're renewing for a two-year agreement. And now, when they end that two-year agreement, they're in their end of their third year, most people are also renewing for their fourth and fifth year, which is also a fairly new development. So that's where I'm coming from. That's the my journey and trajectory. I'm gonna share with you some of the specific things that, that I've learned along the way. So here we go. The first thing to think about is who you bring into your group coaching program in the first place. When I started this program, I wasn't all that discerning. I would sort of take anybody who would pay me the money because I was kind of desperate to be honest in the beginning. When I started my group coaching program, I started it purely because I wanted to make more money and I wanted more scale in my business. I didn't really have a vision of what I was creating or who I was putting together or the type of group that I wanted. I was only focused on can this person afford me and can I help them? I learned this the hard way. You want to make sure that you are enrolling aligned people, meaning that they align with your values, that they align with the expectations and agreements of your group and community. So you get to do you, boo. You decide what works for you. For me, what I'm looking for are people who are fundamentally kind, people who are empowered and willing to do the work, that they've already done enough work that they're not 
stuck in any sort of victim mentality, that they have, that they're feeling excited and empowered and committed to doing the work. I look for people who are spiritually curious and open, people who maybe they don't have a, a religious belief system. In fact, you know, it, it, what we do has nothing to do with religion and who are open to the things that are maybe a little bit transrational, things that are beyond just the, the logic and the, the things that we can touch and, and, and see and taste, right? That they believe that there's more to life than that and that they find themselves being called toward some higher purpose, some sort of higher calling to serve and lead. That's my ideal audience. It does not have to be your ideal audience. Also, my audience is someone who's successful in business already to some degree and is looking to get to that next level. So think about who's your perfect person? Who would you love to be hanging out with and spending time with? Because in a group program, that's important. You're gonna be hanging out, whether that's in person or online, but generally speaking, if you want people to stay with you for the long haul, that means you might be working with somebody for five or 10 years even. The second thing is to very clearly establish standards and boundaries and expectations early on. One of the things that I found is that because I had kind of low standards and not really a whole lot of boundaries about what my expectations were of people, people often took advantage or they didn't really show up fully. That means showing up just from a participation perspective. They might skip the calls and not watch the recordings. So now, part of what I do when I enroll people is I walk through the expectations with them and they're on paper, they're in writing or really on a computer screen. I have an agreement that people sign when they start working with me in my group coaching inner circle program, my big back end program. And in that agreement, it says things like, I will endeavor to do my very best to show up on every single call. And if I won't be on a call, I'll watch the recording. You know, this is, and I have a whole set of things that people are agreeing to for how they're gonna show up throughout the year. And they sign this agreement. So the things you might wanna address in there are meetings, cancellations, reschedules, no shows, how to treat each other, you know, communication guidelines, things like that. Another really important thing to having longevity in your group program is to create a culture of personal accountability. In the world at large, generally speaking, we don't live in a culture of personal accountability. Much of our world, all of our media, is built around finger pointing, blaming, shaming, othering people. This is just my suggestion from what I've experienced. Instead of having following that pervasive culture, I recommend creating a culture of personal accountability where people recognize when they are triggered, when they are feeling upset, frustrated, angry, uh, complaining, all of that, that they turn the finger inward and look at why am I so triggered? What is in my power to shift and change here? And if each person in your group is doing that every time there's a problem, every time there's a group conflict or dynamic issue, then you're gonna find that it elevates your entire group when each person is going inward. That means each person is gonna take personal accountability and if everybody does that, that elevates your whole culture. Another thing that can really help your culture is something that I call the Hall of Mirrors concept, embracing the concept of the Hall of Mirrors. What do I mean by that? Well, in group coaching, one of the biggest challenges you may face, which I faced, is that people don't feel the value sometimes in watching someone else get coached. So if you have a group program and part of your dynamic is that you're hot seating with one person while the rest of the people are watching, I call this fishbowl coaching. This is a pretty common format in a group coaching program and it's a great format, I believe in it. And you might find resistance from the people watching. Well, it's not my turn. This doesn't apply to me. Oh my God, I'm sitting here watching someone else get coached, yada, yada. So one of the most powerful concepts that I believe you can introduce into your culture is this hall of mirrors concept. And what it is, and what I recommend doing is installing it early on, is the idea that we live in, we are working in a hall of mirrors. This is a choice that you get to make. This is a context that you get to create in your culture. 
and it takes some leadership to do it, but essentially what you're doing is you're telling everyone, hey, in this culture, what we do is we buy into this belief that every single person is a mirror of us in some way or another. It's a way of looking at life where, whereby we recognize that we are all connected in some way. We are all part of some whole. This is where the spiritual stuff really helps. And every single person has something to show us, has something to reflect back to us. And if we approach life in that way, and if we especially approach this group in that way, there will always be value in every conversation that's happening, even if you're not directly engaged in the conversation. Another thing that will really support your culture is inculcating an abundance mindset. Again, we live in a culture that's rooted in scarcity. Just to give you an idea, when I showed up for my first economics course in college, they stated that the study of economics is the study of scarcity. We live in a culture that believes that it's dog eat dog and competition. So one thing that you can do to really change your culture and make it more long lasting is to bring in the idea of an abundance mindset. And that will change the way people relate to your culture growing. In a mindset of scarcity, when people see new people coming into your group, they might think, oh, there's less for me. She's gonna have less time for me, less attention for me. The value goes down. And I invite you to create this abundant mindset and help people to see how every single person adds to the hall of mirrors. Every person brings gifts that get leveraged into the group. And so when you bring that in early on, you'll start to find that people welcome new people and they might even refer new people into the group because they get that every new addition that's aligned elevates the culture. Almost done here. A couple of things more. Uh, one of them is to have a path to leadership. People get bored of being in the same role year after year after year. And what I found is that if you give people a way to um, elevate in your culture and elevate into positions of leadership, opportunities to deliver value to the group, to be interviewed by you or to do special spotlights or to deliver some of their value to the group or somehow support you and help facilitate, people will tend to stay longer if they can see themselves growing inside your culture. Ultimately, all of these techniques, I'm recommending them for you to help increase retention, which is literally the linchpin of success in a group coaching business. I hope you found this helpful. And if you're looking for ways to potentially work with me to build and grow your group coaching program, I offer a variety of different services and programs. You can find out if I have something that might be a right fit for you by visiting superstaractivator.com go. I hope to see you soon.